Wish Mountain. Wish Mountain. <laughs> just felt what right. It, wi- wish Mountain just felt right. Sometimes things just feel right. Yeah. Make art with your best friend. That always feels right too. Yeah, the cool, the yeah, definitely. Just make yeah. Make art with your best friends. Do everything with your best friends. Be best friends with everybody. <laughs> Very cool. I'm Brian Selke. Right, I'm Casey Van Heck. And ultra optimism is our own art movement that we're trying to create or creating. This is already stupid. I already sound stupid. It became. <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> you sound great. Um, Ultra Optimism started essentially. Brian and I have been working together for a really long time, probably like seven years, and it started as a like as a means to oh, just talk about our work together. We've yeah. always worked separate, but um, been so close and exhibited so much together that it was just a way for us to kind of contextualize the work as one sort of practice but it you know peanut butter and jelly kind of thing yeah we still like maintain autonomy as artists but ultra optimism is almost like kind of like a mantra of like how to work and and our goals of how we want our our work to like express itself to people so our ideas are essentially like making inclusive art that um makes people feel loved yeah art that makes people feel loved and it's it's its goal is to essentially be inviting to everybody and become almost like a social practice where um, the artwork is participatory. Um, participatory. <laughs> oh my God. And, and uh, you can have, you can create a relationship with it by yourself, but also you create a relationship with it through the other gallery co- goers, the people that are experiencing the work. I'm so brain dead right now. <laughs> So the first, the first piece, what? <laughs> um, so the first piece you see when you walk up is is Casey's balloon installation, the bigger the asteroid. But then there's also a sign, a neon sign that just says Katy Perry right as you walk up um, into the house, and I love that entryway because Katy Perry was really the entryway for me into ultra optimism because she sets up this world that's just like, you know, Please. total pop. And just total cheese, but it's it's so good and so fun and so enjoyable, and that's what I I want my art to kind of reflect. I want I want my art to do to other people what Katy Perry did to me with her music, <laughs> and so just making it just real simple and just Katy Perry, that is ultra optimism to me. Yeah. Um. I don't know, my, my work in general, like especially with this, this body of work for Wish Mountain, is really just like creating re- relationships with things that I, I already have like a tactile relationship with, like cigarettes and alcohol and glitter. <laughs> I spend quite a bit of time with glitter. And trying to take these things that might be like kind of have like a more negative connotation or, or are like dirty and gross and make them really beautiful and positive and fun and exciting. It still carries like a little bit of like weight to it. I feel like there's some darkness behind because like all of all of my work in this show is like a massive amount of of objects, like a massive amount of champagne foils and a massive amount of cigarettes and a massive amount of like balloons and glitter. And I think it's just um, there is like some like a little bit of darkness there, but it's trying to like make it. When it's all like trash materials that you're cheap, you know, cheap, just I'm elevating cheap, in cheap the date. in the yeah. Uh, in Big and rich. <laughs> <laughs> All of his work is so expensive. But it's cool because there's a lot of nice pairing with the show. Like, you know, Casey has a bottle piece, and I have a bottle piece. But, you know, high and home yeah. can be more different, but the materials are similar and the, the aesthetic is. There's like a. The, yeah, and there's a general sincerity and honesty to all of the works that are in this. You know, and um, there's a sweetness and kind of a coolness, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all like they're all they're all very personal but like but can be very personal for other people as well they don't have to be specifically personal to me mm-hmm. and i think that's sort of the point of using those ty- types of materials that are like ubiquitous and like i said mundane because they don't just belong to me everybody has their own relationship with a beer bottle or, or cigarettes or a music or um you know sort of like party materials so the reason I'm really excited to show at the Blue House is it takes the 
the context of an art show and puts it in a, a home, a literal home. So to take these objects and these art pieces that I've made, um, you know, a lot of what I try to do is make it accessible to everybody and putting it in a much more comfortable, homey environment makes it a lot more, um, makes that entry point a lot more comfortable and a lot more um, easy to engage because you're not in the sterile white room gallery you're in like you know there's couches and, it's a domestic and there's there's windows and there's all these things that kind of put you in a different mindset where it's you're living in the art well, you instead do, you of get a just viewing crowd the art too. you get you know as opposed to like a typical like gallery going crowd or like a in, like going to like some sort of museum or institution or something like that but yeah, a lot of what I try to do with my art is make it easy and I think um, you know putting it in a more comfortable um, environment just makes everything easier <laughs> and so to pick up a guitar and play it you know it makes it makes more sense to do it in a house yeah than in you know well then it feels a like a house party yeah and we like parties. and we love parties so yeah it's perfect